Transition in the Twin Toddler Triathlon There is no rushing it. There are no real measures. Just how late you can push things before sleep takes you. I have no real power. My heart is all over the place. And it's not at all clear how I win or if it's possible to finish. But I have learned to smell the flowers along the way. Hi everyone, I'm Coach John Stewart. Sometimes it's good to take a moment and slow down before you speed up. This week in our brick session, we begin to work on pacing. It's a straightforward concept. In any race, we want to put in the best effort we can on the bike while saving enough energy for a strong run. So the bike feels easier than the run, but the effort is managed very specifically. One way to make sure our body is ready for this buildup of intensity is to perform workouts with negative splits. In our case, a multi-break is ideal. We ride and run the same short course several times and try to increase pace each round. Here's the basic layout. Bike, transition, run, repeat. It takes somewhere between 60 and 80 minutes to complete. Not super long, but long enough that the final round can fail if you go out too fast. It's also long enough to perhaps try out one version of your race day nutrition. That's a hint. Each leg is also long enough to allow you to settle in on a heart rate, power output, or rate of perceived exertion. So you have a great opportunity if you just picked up a new device to see how your efforts show up on a heart rate or power graphic and figure out how to get that information to your computer screen. Or for those of you with some experience, you can plan and control your efforts with your heart rate monitor or power meter. Here's what the numbers might look like with an athlete building from very easy to moderate or basically moving from a zone one recovery pace to mid zone two. And at the end of this video, we'll do a quick review of training zones and what the Bork scale is. You may not have all the bells and whistles on this graphic, and that's not a problem, but you should at least have your basic Timex with a split timer so you can see whether you succeeded. Saying you felt like you were going faster is just not enough. You need to know if you were, and if so, by how much. For heart rate and power, we're looking for an increase of five beats per minute or five to 10 watts each round. But as long as you put out more effort and increase pace, you win. If you're new to your electronics or new to really looking closely at the output, I encourage you to simply go out very easy on the bike and creep up the northern hill, then do an easy jog to complete your first round. Keep an eye on your data and bump it up from there for the next bike run in the workout. The big thing here, whether the graph or the table looks quite right this time, is to begin capturing data and start learning. If you have some experience, you might try to move from the bottom of zone two to the top over the course of the session with the second round right in the middle. Remember to try getting into and out of your shoes a few times while on the bike if you can do it safely on the road or trainer. Keep your eyes forward. Do this as quickly as possible and practice your race dismount if you can. The cool thing is that when you start testing next week, you'll find out exactly what you are accomplishing in terms of zones and adaptations with this week's workout. So let's finish up with a quick review of our training zones, their adaptations, and how they feel. I've included a Borg scale since it's the most common one for noting rate of perceived exertion or RPE. As you can see, the workout this week is in the easy to conversational range. How you feel relates closely to your breathing, so be more conscious of it moving forward. Recall that we'll be doing some testing in the near future, and then workouts based on those results. Being able to pace your tests versus just stomping on the gas from the start will go a long way to producing your best numbers. So the type of learning we're doing here, if you continually dig into it, 
will impact your race readiness and your season in a very positive way. Thanks.